to determine support reactions of a beam we must know what is a beam and what are the different types of beams in common use beams are usually long prismatic bars used to resist bending under applied loads now types of beams first is a simple beam or simply supported beam which is supported at two ends one by a pin joint or a hinge support and second one is a roller support second type of beam is a cantilever beam which is fixed at one end now in its entire length you can apply different types of load here i have applied one point load at the end of cantilever beam third beam is combination of these two you can see in between these two it is acting as a simply supported beam and after this it is acting as a cantilever beam this type of beam is also called overhanging beam now here this part is overhanged in one side you can have both side overhang that means this extended portion you can extend this beam at this side also in that case it is called double overhang here it is single overhang next type of beam is a continuous beam and a simply supported beam is supported at multiple points here you can see this is a simply supported beam and one extra support is provided if there are multiple supports provided in a simply supported beam then that type of beam is called a continuous beam this is a propped cantilever beam in this cantilever beam one extra support is provided here one roller support so this type of cantilever is called propped cantilever third one is a fixed beam now here in a cantilever beam opposite side is also fixed so this type of beam is called a fixed beam in statics we assume all bodies to be rigid therefore irrespective of length of beam or applied load there should not be any deflection and therefore these are extra supports provided this type of beams are called statically indeterminate beams because reactions of these supports cannot be determined only using the principles of statics you determine support reactions in statically indeterminate problems you must consider load deformation properties in addition to the principle of statics in these three cases which are called statically determinate problems you can apply principles of statics to determine support reactions so we are going to determine support reactions in these three cases these three cases are considered in the course mechanics of solids where we assume all bodies as a deformable bodies and therefore we consider load deformation properties so different types of external loads that are applied in a beam are concentrated load and distributed load a concentrated load is shown here which is applied at a very small area and so this type of load is called concentrated load or a point load now distributed load here i have shown one distributed load where load is distributed throughout the length of this cantilever beam from this point to this point this load is uniformly distributed to city of this load is 2 kN per meter throughout from this point to this point this type of load is called uniformly distributed load now here from this point to this point load is uniformly varying from 2 kN per meter here intensity of load is 2 kN per meter and it is varying to 6 kN per meter uh, at this point so it is uniformly varying so this type of load is called uniformly uniformly varying load maybe some loads which are arbitrarily distributed so this is the intensity intensity curve of a load here uh, the load is varying from 200 newton per meter to 800 newton per meter and this variation is according to some relation steps to determine reactions of these supports are first draw free body diagram of beam apply all external concentrated loads and couples given then convert distributed load into concentrated load by determining area formed by load intensity and length this load should pass through the centroid of area in case of uniformly distributed load this is a rectangle so you have to determine area of this rectangle 2 kN per meter into length 4 meter in this way or you can extend this line up to here so you can see this is a rectangle and this one is a triangle so in this way you can determine area of rectangle or area of triangle area will be the resultant force 
and that resultant must be applied at the center of rectangle or center of triangle in this case. Now in this case you have to apply uh, this entire force, you have to determine area under this curve and that area will be the resultant of this distributed force, that resultant must be applied at the centroid of this area. After this you have to apply equations of equilibrium to determine unknown Sections. Now, equations of equilibrium for a coplanar force systems are sigma fx equal to 0, sigma fy is equal to 0 and sigma m is equal to 0. Here I have taken one example of a simply supported beam. This support is hinge support at A and here one roller support but this roller support is at an angle of 45 degree from vertical. Draw free body diagram apply all point loads. So there is one point load of 6 kN at this point C. Its distance is 6 meter from A. Now next is a couple 9 kN meter which is applied at point B at a distance of 3 meter from point A. So this couple 9 kN meter. In place of roller support you have to show only one reaction. That reaction should be perpendicular to the surface. So this is the direction of reaction. So this is RD, I have named this reaction as RD which is acting at an angle of, uh, actually this RD is acting at an angle of 45 degree from vertical, from vertical. But since it is a 45 degree, so I have shown this 45 degree from horizontal also because both angle will be same. This is a pin support, so you have to show two reactions which are perpendicular to each other. So I have drawn two reactions XA and YA like in this manner and these two are perpendicular to each other. Now resolve this RD into horizontal and vertical components. So I have resolved this RD into vertical components. RD sine 45 opposite side and this is adjacent side. This is RD cos 45. Now once you resolve this RD into two components, so you can cancel it out, cancel this RD. Now all forces you can see are along x and y direction. Assume this as positive x and y direction. This is positive x direction and this is positive y direction. Now next step is to apply equations of equilibrium. So first equation of equilibrium is sigma fx is equal to 0. According to this equation you can see in this entire free body diagram this is one force in x direction xa positive x direction. And another one is this is RD cos 45 which is in along negative x direction. So this is positive x so it is in this direction so it is minus minus RD cos 45. So sum of these two must be 0 so equal to 0. If you simplify you will get XA is equal to RD cos 45. Next equation is sigma Fy is equal to 0. Now if you see here uh, this is one force Ya which is in positive y direction. This is 6 kN in negative y direction. This is positive y, so downward is negative y minus 6. And the third one is Rd sin 45, which is again in positive y direction. So if you write this equation, you will get Ya minus 6 plus Rd sin 45 is equal to 0. So you can simplify this. So you will get Ya plus Rd sin 45 is equal to 6. Now next equation is sigma m is equal to 0. So you can take moment about any point in this beam or anywhere you can take moment. So I have taken moment with respect to this point which is A point because if you take moment from this point, moment of xa and ya will become 0 because these two are passing through this point. So only unknown remaining will be rd and therefore you can determine rd from this single equation. So if you take moment with respect to point A, so you will, uh, I am assuming clockwise moment as positive and anti-clockwise moment as negative. Now first is here 9 kN meter distance is multiplied. Effect of this couple on equilibrium of this beam will be same irrespective of the point of application. If this 9 kN meter is applied here or here or here anywhere you apply this 9 kN meter its effect will be same. And it is for the, uh, clockwise direction therefore I am taking 9 as positive distance is already multiplied here 
kilo newton meter plus second is uh, moment of 6 kilo newton with respect to point a you can see this is the perpendicular distance from this point to this point which is 6 meter this force is 6 and distance is 6 now moment of 6 kilo newton about this point is clockwise if you rotate this this will be in clockwise direction so moment of 6 kilo newton is clockwise therefore this is plus 6 into 6 now next is rd sin 45 again you can see perpendicular distance of rd sin 45 uh, if you put uh, if you draw perpendicular from a in this force this is the perpendicular distance this is 6 plus 3 9 meter and rd sin 45 with respect to point a it is anti clockwise if you rotate this force around this uh, point then this will be anti clockwise so minus rd sin 45 into distance is 9 now next force is rd cos 45 you can see that if you extend this force it will pa it is passing through the point a itself so distance of this rd cos 45 that is perpendicular distance of rd cos 45 from this point a is zero therefore moment of rd cos 45 with respect to point a will also be zero so you, your equation will become this one 9 plus 6 into 6 minus rd sin 45 into 9 is equal to zero from this equation you can determine value of rd as 7.707 kN. once you get value of rd you put this value of rd here in this equation so you are getting xa xa is equal to 7.07 cos 45 and you will get xa as 5 kN. now same this value put this value of rd in this equation here so you will get ya as 1 kN. Once you get value of XA and YA, you can determine resultant of these two RA that will be equal to root over XA square plus YA square is equal to root over 5 square plus 1 square is equal to 5.1 kN. Now, direction of this RA uh, can be determined. Theta is equal to tan inverse YA divided by XA. So, YA is 1 divided by 5. So, tan inverse 1 by 5, 11.3 degree. Now, here you, you obtain value of XA and YA as positive value. That means direction assumed is uh, correct direction. So, XA is acting in this direction and YA in this direction. So, this theta will be uh, from XA, 11.3 degree. So, R will look like this. So, this is the R, RA which is making an angle of theta equal to 11.3 degree from xa that means from xa this is ya xa and ya ra is making theta angle so ra is acting in this direction making an angle of 11.3 degree in the direction from the direction of beam now next example is in this example uniformly distributed loads are applied so in this example you can see uh, there are two UDLs are applied. One is uh, intensity of one is two kilonewton per meter for the length of two meter, and other one kilonewton per meter for the length of one meter. First, you determine this uh, resultant of these two UDLs. So, first UDL one total load or resultant of UDL one. So, this is two kilonewton meter, uh, two kilonewton per meter. It at an, uh, for the distance of 2 meters so total load will be 2 into 2 4 kN and you have to apply this 4 kN at its centroid at the, that means 1 meter from point A or E so 1 meter towards right from A or 1 meter towards left from point E here you have to apply this 4 kN so second UDL is uh, this one 1 kN per meter into 1 meter so this is uh, 1 into 1 is equal to 1 kilonewton and you have to apply this 1 kilonewton at the center of this rectangle or center of this UDL which is uh, 0.5 meter from point B or from point D. So draw free body diagram of this beam. Here two reactions are shown at A and B. Draw these two reactions which is which are at distances given distances and uh, now apply point loads these are the two point, point loads 1 kN at C 3 kN at E their distances now apply this uh, resultant force of this which is equal to 4 kN at, an, at a distance 1 meter from A 1 meter from A mark this distance similarly this 1, one kN load it is acting at a distance of 0.5 meter from point B 
point. Now you have to apply uh, three equations, sigma fx equal to zero, sigma fy equal to zero, and sigma m is equal to zero. Now there is no force along the direction of x, so uh, you can uh, leave that equation. You won't get any equation for sigma fx equal to zero. Apply sigma fy is equal to zero will get uh, these forces you can see 1 kilonewton, 4 kilonewton, 3 kilonewton and 1 kilonewton these all four forces are along negative y direction this is positive y so minus y and ra and rb in positive y direction so equation will become ra plus rb minus 1 minus 4 minus 3 minus 1 is equal to 0 so if you simplify you will get ra plus rb is equal to 9 kilonewton now sigma m is equal to 0 so you can take uh, moment with respect to this point so that one reaction will become 0 moment of one reaction will become 0 so I am taking moment with respect to point A this is point A is equal to 0 now moment of RA will become 0 now next all other forces you have to consider so this is 1 kilonewton it is anti-clockwise anti-clockwise so equation will become this is min 1 kilonewton anti-clockwise so minus 1 into its distance is 1.5 meters so 1 into minus 1 into 1.5 second second moment is 4 kilonewton with respect to this point 4 kilonewton is clockwise so positive 4 into distance is 1 meter so 4 into 1 now third force is 3 kilonewton with respect to this point a Again, this is clockwise, 3 kilonewton is clockwise, so its distance is 2, so this is 3 into 2. Now, RB is anti-clockwise with respect to point. Th this point, you can see this is uh, upward direction, so RB, if you rotate this RB along, around this point A, it is anti-clockwise direction, so minus RB into 3. And last one is 1 kilonewton, again, this is positive clockwise direction with respect to this point A it is moving uh, its moment is clockwise so this is 1 into its distance is this is 3 plus 0.5 3.5 is equal to 0 simplify you will get rb is equal to 4 kilonewton once you get this value of rb put this value of rb here so rb uh, this is uh, 4 kilonewton so ra will become 9 minus 4 is equal to 5 kilonewton this is your answer ra in my next video i will explain how to determine support reactions when uh, distributed loads are applied.